In this week's video, the latest charts will help us update the long-term outlook for stocks. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. Before we look at the charts as of Friday, August 25th, let's kick off the video with our North Star. We know that the longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that we can expect to get. Harder markets are typically followed by easier markets, and we could put easier in quotes because it's never particularly easy on a day-by-day -day basis. We also know that even the strongest trends always have volatility, making it difficult to navigate from a point A to a point B. And just to refresh our memories about the current profile in August of 2017, the longer a market goes sideways in this case was 830 calendar days. And of course, the S&P 500 actually rallied into the spring of 2000 out of this consolidation box. The gain immediately following the breakout was roughly 40%. How does the present day setup compare to this number 830? The consolidation box that started Back in 2013, the sideways movement was actually longer than that period. Price was inside of the box for 1,130 calendar days, telling us that it's not unreasonable to assume that we are in an easier market now that would be marked by stronger trends that could last several years. And before we look at the present day charts, let's just recap Another period that we've covered, 2013 was marked by a strong bullish trend. And we know from past videos that volatility is a part of every trend, even the strongest trends. And our goal is always to navigate from a point A to a point B. And the math and the model help us discern between volatility to ignore, volatility to ignore within the context of an ongoing uptrend, and eventually volatility to respect when the market rolls over. Day-to-day -day volatility tends to tug on our emotions and thus, if we add in our trend following tools, in this case, the 200-day moving average is much easier to handle emotionally than day-to-day -day volatility or price. The math allows us to sidestep that day-to-day -day volatility and focus on the longer-term trends. This is the 2013 case here. We said 2017 had some similar characteristics to this period as well. After some volatility in the present day, how does the 200-day moving average look on August 25th, 2017? Here's the answer. Despite recent volatility, the long-term trend as of August 25th, based on the facts that we have in hand, still looks solid and healthy. Obviously, that's subject to change, but we manage based on the facts in hand, and what we have in hand right now still looks good. Remember, last week we said there were numerous and common pitfalls that make it difficult to navigate from a point A to a point B, and the gain in this case in 2013 was almost 30%. But during normal and 100% to be expected volatility, as humans, we all tend to be vulnerable to these common missteps or pitfalls. Despite the strong look of the 200-day moving average on August 25th, 2017, there have been numerous events in the news and in the headlines that would have a tendency to have us focus on the shorter term rather than the data or the facts that we have in hand. Would have been very, very easy in recent weeks to try to avoid volatility, to be fearful of the next pullback, to be thinking about the next bear market. There's always a long list of if this happens, then the market could do this. Math and the model and the moving averages and the inputs help us step outside of ourselves and get away from the shorter term emotions and ask, what is the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening 
based on the facts that we have in hand, allowing us to make a much more rational rather than emotional decision. You may remember when we originally covered this 2013 chart, which is a daily chart, we also said we could use weekly moving averages to help us filter out all of this day-to-day -day volatility, noise, and distractions. Here's the exact same period here, calendar year 2013. We've removed the volatility and we're focusing on our 30, 40, and 50 week for illustrative purposes only moving averages. This looks a lot easier than this. And in this historical case, the moving averages would have helped us move from point A to point B and classify this as volatility to ignore. Have these moving averages or these concepts been helpful in recent months? Here are the same weekly 30 and 40 and 50 week moving averages on December 22nd, 2016. This look here and this turn here was telling us to be open to better than expected outcomes, at least from a probabilistic perspective, late in 2016. How does the exact same chart look today? The answer is solid as of Friday, August 25th, 2017. And thus far, these moving averages have helped us look at the facts instead of focusing on fearful headlines and stay with what is still a longer term bullish trend. And above and beyond geopolitical concerns, in the present day there are also fundamental concerns, one of those being valuations. This is the range of PE ratios here for the S&P 500. This is 2015, this is early 2017, this is January 5th, 2017. You can see the range here of PEs was 20 to 26. It's really not that much different from the range of PEs that we had from 1991 to 1994. And despite these scary looking PEs here, good things happen for a long period of time. The range here is not discernibly different from the range here. And in both of these cases, good things did happen. The gain with relatively high P.E. ratios here was 232%. This is a six-year move here. If we were focusing just on P.E.s in this period here, it would have been very, very difficult to envision the stock market going up 232% over the next six years. In a similar manner, if we were looking exclusively at P.E. ratios here, it would have been difficult to envision the market tacking on an additional 41% over 3.4 years. But in both cases, that's exactly what happened. And as we've demonstrated here with two anecdotal historical examples, Bloomberg noted valuation history shows is an awful tool for market timing. Clients and regular viewers know that we have shown examples of volatility, normal volatility within the context of ongoing and already established bullish trends in numerous videos over the past year. It's really easy to look at this with the benefit of hindsight and say, yes, that makes sense. But in the present day, it's much more difficult. Therefore, it's rational to remind ourselves, we know volatility is a normal part of all trends and it's to be expected. Thus, none of us should be surprised by the recent volatility in the stock market in August of 2017. Thus far, for the major indices and the vast, vast majority of our holdings, the volatility that we've seen has been classified as volatility to ignore within the context of an ongoing uptrend. How long that lasts is to be determined. We'll take it day by day as long as the data tells us to stay the course will stay the course. When the data tells us we need to make an incremental adjustment, we'll make an incremental adjustment. Here's what our major turns look like using our weekly and for illustrative purposes, only 30, 40, and 50 week weekly moving averages here. This is the turn in 2003. After this, good things happen for a long period of time. 
Here's the turn on the weekly chart in 2009 after this good things happened for a long period of time. We have a similar turn here in mid-year 2016. And as we noted late last year, the look of this chart here doesn't really look anything like these concerning bearish turns using the same moving averages late in 2007 and early in 2008 and here before really bad things started to happen in calendar year 2000 and early in 2001. Back in December, we said the facts in hand look constructive. How does that same chart look today? Back here, we knew that the probabilities told us the odds said good things could happen for a long period of time. And the moving averages as of August 25th, 2017, still align with that theory that good things could happen for a long period of time. The August 2017 chart here still looks a lot more like these bullish turns and really doesn't look anything like these bearish turns. You may remember last week we did some weeding in a relatively small patch of our portfolio. We had one position that looked vulnerable from a mathematical perspective. That position is still vulnerable and has a very, very short rope as of Friday, August 25th. It's possible that we might take action with that position as early as today, or we may have to do so early next week. This position is not held in all accounts. So if you didn't see a sale last week, that's fine. It didn't occur in all accounts. We'll keep an eye on it from a big picture perspective. Number one, this is a relatively small part of our portfolios from a percentage allocation perspective. And number two, the action that we took last week and the action that we may have to take in the coming days tells us that the necessary discipline is in place. So when the longer term trends eventually roll over in the S&P 500, and that could happen over the next three months, it might not happen for another three years, but we do know that discipline will serve us well going forward. I'm gonna shift gears here and give clients an update on the front end screens that we talked about in the May 20th, 2017 video. To refresh your memory, we're talking about simplifying some things on the front end. We're not making any changes to the core model. There's just some screens that we've added out here. As anticipated, what we've seen so far is encouraging, and thus, Kathy and I are in the process of backtesting those screens described in that May 20th video. For numerous reasons, we like to do our backtests by hand, meaning it's all zeros and ones based on answering questions from charts. As you might imagine, this is a detailed and incredibly time-consuming process. Therefore, if it seems like we're in radio silence mode on Twitter or the frequency of our posts on short takes drop over the next few weeks or few months, we just wanted to let you know why. As noted back in May, we believe these screens are a watershed moment for the market model, and these changes should assist us for many years to come. We have already conducted some spot backtesting, but now we're trying to tie it all together over a very long period of time. We'll keep you posted in the coming weeks and months. Heading towards the finish line here, we'll look at a few more August 2017 charts. In the past, we've covered this. These are daily charts. This is the 50-day moving average here in blue. It helps us with the intermediate term trend. And this is our 200-day moving average here in red that helps us with the long-term trend. This is the type of longer-term look that we want to avoid. 200-day flattening out and rolling over, and then you get a bearish cross. 200-day flattening out, then rolling over, and we have a bearish cross late in calendar year 2007. I can see this measure it and put it in a model before really bad things happen. 
I can see this, measure it, and put it in a model before really bad things happen. And everything we do speaks to probabilities. And no matter how sound the present day profile, the probability of bad things happening is never zero. We always have to keep an open mind about all outcomes. And if we flip the script, this is what a bullish turn looks like, flattening out 200 day, the trend turns up and we get a bullish cross. Flattening out 200 day, the long-term trend turns up here in 2009. We can see this, measure it, and put it in a model. And we also get the bullish cross here. So the million dollar question is, in the present day, do we look more like a peaking process here? Or do we look more like a bottom or a bullish trend? The answer is the present day looks like a bullish trend. And if we went back further in time, we do have a look that's very, very similar to this look here in 2016. And I'll look very, very similar to this look here in 2016 as well. A fair question might be the 50 day moving average looks like it's trying to roll over here. Remember, we make decisions based on the weight of the evidence. So the look of the 50 day in a pullback from a shorter term perspective is always taken in the context of the longer term perspective. Why? Because if we get too close to the market and focus on shorter term time frames only, we can see here the 50 day moving average has rolled over numerous times since the bottom in 2009 and despite all of these quote unquote bearish looks the s p 500 has moved from point a down here to a point b up here we're not trying to make the point that the shorter term trends in the 50 day are not important they are important but they have to be taken in the context of the weight of the evidence which includes the longer term trends as well We'll continue to take it day by day with an open mind, but based on what we have in front of us today, it still looks like we came out of a harder market and we're in a quote unquote easier market that will still have a lot of volatility between a point A and a point B. We'll continue to manage against that as long as the data that we have in hand matches that. If it starts to flip the other way, then we have to become open to harsher outcomes and stocks moving in this direction. We can't emphasize enough within the context of a bullish trend, volatility is not the enemy. The objective of the market model is not to avoid volatility. The objective is to understand volatility and to classify it either as volatility to ignore within the context of an ongoing uptrend or volatility to respect or volatility to respect that requires some type of incremental defensive action. And we know that our trend following techniques in the model can help us get a better understanding relative to our emotions in isolation of the probability of the market going on to make a higher high after this type of pullback. And this quote applies to our hard data. We can't use the hard data properly unless we have a presence of mind to do so. I learned at C, virtually all situations can be handled as long as the presence of mind is maintained. It's very, very difficult to use these tools properly if we lose our presence of mind and let our emotions take over. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model 
then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, Short Takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.